We're traveling America in search of great craft beer, the breweries who make it, the bars who serve it, and the chefs making great food to pair with it. I'm Chris, and this is Destination Beer. Many people treat Bend as a destination for skiing, for snowboarding, for hiking, and fly fishing. It's also the home of the Ale Trail. But today, we're here to visit Deschutes Brewery. And as impressive as this building is on the outside, it's the inside where the magic really happens. Let's check it out. Before we do the tour, let's hit the tasting room. Hey, welcome to Deschutes Brewery. My name's Eric. Hey, Deschutes Aaron. Brewery Tour Supervisor. Nice to meet you. It's good to meet you too. You're going to be taking us on a tour of the brewery today, right? Yeah, absolutely. But how about we get started with some beer samples first? I think that sounds good. All right. We've got a couple of different beers on tap for you today. A few of our flagships. We have Black Butte Porter for you. All right, we're talking about the Black Butte Porter. We're standing in front of the Black Butte, just outside of Bend. Deschutes really enjoys honoring the land that they're from. And so naming it after such a beautiful butte is obvious. Uh, Black Butte Porter is rich with chocolate, coffee flavors, a lot of chocolate malt, carapils, crystal malts, very low in bitterness. So it's very easy drinking. For those of you that are scared of a dark beer, don't be. But this beer will line up really well with a lot of different foods. It's gonna be really great with anything off the grill. There's a reason the Black Butte Porter is the flagship beer for Deschutes Brewery. Jason, how's it going? Great. Now Jason does a lot of cycling in and around Bend. Jason, tell us about uh, why you love cycling in Bend so much. Man, we're spoiled here. You know, I rode three miles of single track from my garage to get here to the Deschutes River. Can't complain. Ride my bike to work on a bike path. And you know, there's just endless miles of uh, single track right outside of Bend. Nice. And there's usually a pub at the end of uh, you know, the <laughs> ride, so. Always nice to have a beer at the end of a long, hard ride. And you guys can pretty much ride year round here too, right? We do, yeah. When there's snow on up near the mountains, we just head east of town to where it's dry. And yeah, we pretty much ride year round. You just got to dress up for it. And there's a lot of mountain biking racing here in the Bend area too, isn't there? Yeah, mountain biking, but also cyclocross racing and road racing. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Uh, one of our favorites is the Chain Breaker mountain bike race every May. You know, that's a lot of fun. It's so fun that it shoots for a name to beer after it. And one of the coolest things that I've learned is that there are actually people who maybe do a vacation all cycling. Definitely, and people actually move here, you know, after hearing about the cycling or vacationing here to see all there is to offer. Well, I know I'm hooked. Let's go ride. Let's do it. The great thing about coming to Bend and cycling around is you don't have to bring your own bike. You could rent one, like I did at Pine Mountain Sports. All right, so next we're gonna check out the Hoopman Brew House. Hey Owen, how's it going? Grains come down here from the mill room into the mash time? Yeah, that's right. This is where we're gonna rehydrate the grain to start breaking the starches down. Okay. Over here in the louder ton, we basically have a big strainer separating the liquids from the solids. Okay. We're then gonna take this spent grain and recycle it in a number of different ways. Nice. Some of the spent grain goes up to our bakers upstairs where they okay. bake into our house baked wheat buns. Oh, nice. Most of that spent grain, though, goes to local cattle ranchers. The cows are primarily grass fed. However, they get a special treat when they're uh, finished. Uh, <laughs> they get the spent grain from the brewing process to fatten them up a little bit. If you get a burger at the Shrewsbury Public House, it's made from the cows that ate the grain that made the beer that lived in the brewery that Gary built. And here we are at Borland Cattle Company. This is the spent grain coming from Deschutes Brewery. Those cows are eating and completing the circle of beer and of burgers. And later on the show, we'll find out just exactly what Chef Jeff does with those burgers. 
Hey, Chris, what's happening? It's going great, man. How are you? Doing great, man. It's been a while. I'm really anxious to learn about what you guys are doing here in Bend and uh, just tell us a little bit more about the philosophy of uh, what Deschutes does with their food here. You know, one of our main focuses is really try to keep everything as local as possible sure. and really celebrate Oregon and its products and people and uh, farmers, foragers, fishermen and all that and uh, nice. you know, really take their products and just try to accentuate the uh, beautiful flavors that we get up here in the Northwest. Great, that sounds awesome. What are we going to do first? Well, we're going to make some uh, beer battered prosciutto fries. Oh, yeah, man. That sounds so good. It's a real simple dish. Um, I made a quick beer batter of uh, flour, cornstarch, cayenne, um, and then just chain breaker. And that's all that is. And then we're going to take the prosciutto, kind of a thick slice, under a quarter inch. And I'm just going to cut like a julienne cut. It's just kind of a nice square cut. Get them into the beer batter. Let's go ahead and get these into the deep fryer. So if I want to make these at home, what's the best way for me to fry these up? What I do is I just, you know, a nice, uh, relatively heavy saucepan with the four cups of oils that, that's on the recipe. And there's thermometers you can buy at your local grocery store that'll uh, go up to like 400 degrees. And you just want to heat your oil, medium temperature, and uh, just hold it at that temperature and it'll work just like a deep fryer. It's staying in the oil for how long? Um, just about three minutes, two, okay, three minutes. So yeah, so quick. once it gets a nice t uh, color and texture, you can really tell just by seeing the nice golden brown. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is now that they're kind of drained off a little bit, we'll let them into one of our sample glasses here. Basically, we got salt, we got pork, and we got a fried food in one. <laughs> and beer. There you go. Get the fries up. I got the Bachelor Bitter, it's one of the classics. I like the food, the food's awesome. I'm drinking the uh, Black Beet Porter. Well worth the travel down from Seattle. It's awesome. I loved it. So I'm gonna take you into a part of the brewery that nobody ever gets to see. This nice. is the belly of the beast, the bottom of the Hoopman Brew House. Nice. So what we have down here is a whole bunch of pipes, valves, plumbing, and piping. This facility is where we can capture any of the spent grain from the brewing process that we send to the local cattle ranchers, spent yeast that's no longer viable, any uh, hops that are too bitter for the cows to eat, get collected down here and sent through a company called AgriCycle. They take all of our biological waste and they essentially compost it. They turn it into fertilizer oh, and nice. then sell it to local farmers. All right, so this is where the magic really happens because up until now, we've been just talking about sugar water, not beer. That's exactly right. We're gonna pitch our yeast in at this point and it's going to ferment that wort into beer. Next up, Chef Jeff's gonna make a braised pork belly. That's incredible. We're gonna check out the hops cooler and Veronica Vega is gonna show us where it all started for Deschutes 25 years ago. This is where it all started for Deschutes back in 1988. This is Veronica Vega. She is the assistant brewmaster uh, here at Deschutes. Veronica, this is where it all started. What what was the yeah. what were the three beers we started so, with here? Uh, Bachelor Bitter, Black Beet Porter, uh, and Cascade Golden Ale. Two of those beers, which you could still order right around uh, the corner here at the pub. Um, and you know we've upgraded some equipment since then. Obviously <laughs> here uh, we're. Kind of proud of these new shiny tanks back there, but um, yep, this is where it all began. That's awesome. And so you are the assistant brewmaster, but obviously you didn't start there. Where did you start when you were with the shoots? Yeah, so I'm one of a few assistant brewmasters for the brewery, and I started um, actually in tours. So, um, you know, back then we only gave tours on the weekend. It was my Saturday, Sunday job. And, you know, after telling that story over and over again, and um, and learning and watching the process, I, I really got into learning about how beer was made and um, decided to make a career change in my, you know, right. 20s. All right, we're actually going to catch up with Veronica a little bit later and try some of the great beers that she makes down here in Brew One. But right now, we're going to go check out some of the activities that we can do around the Bend area. Nothing like the feel of a great golf shot or being in the middle of the fairway. And Bend has lots of great golfing opportunities, like here at the River's Edge Golf Course. We 
plan to do some hiking later on in Bend, but if you play golf like I do, you may do some on the golf course too. Now where's my ball? Well, we're gonna roll into uh, another appetizer that we do here. It's a, a root beer braised pork belly. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil here and a little bit of salt and pepper just to get a little flavor going. And we'll just go ahead and toss that right into about a uh, 350 degree oven, which the pork bellies that are now braised Oh, will come out of. Oh, look at that. Isn't that fun? That looks amazing. That's beautiful. So we'll let that rest for a second. And while we do that, I just want to garnish it with a little bit of egg yolk. So I'm just going to dump that right into the water. All right, well, it looks like we're in good shape, Chris. We've got a perfectly poached egg yolk. We'll get this thing good. on a plate. So we'll start off with a chain breaker mustard. Put a little toast on the plate. Get the pork belly right on top of oh, there. That looks pretty amazing. And just to make sure we got a nice thing going, we'll get a little richness yeah. on top of there. I like a little bit of the uh, micro greens on top for a little crunch and flavor. All right. And then the, wow. pretty much what we got. Mm. That was incredible. Thanks, man. Bend is known for some great hiking and biking trails. Let's go explore it. One of my favorite things to do is to hit the trails, walk in the trees, and just get away from the sounds of the city. Central Oregon offers miles and miles of hiking trails, backpacking trails. There's so many opportunities to get away from everything and lose yourself in nature. And one of the great things about, about this area is you can actually lose yourself without wandering that far. It's a great time to reflect, to enjoy the sounds of the Deschutes River, and just enjoy a certain piece. Hey guys, we're here at Mirror Pond, ironically named Deschutes Beer. There's the bridge that you see on the label. When Deschutes selected the name, they selected it based on the people coming out here and the fact that this is very central to life in Bend. Very much like the Mirror Pond Pale Ale is. It's very easy drinking, very tasty beer, something that a lot of people can enjoy, a lot like Mirror Pond out here. Here we have our hop cooler. Nice. This holds about a week's worth of hops for Deschutes Brewery. Wow. We've got several tons of whole hop flowers that we're gonna brew through in one week's production. We're one of the largest consumers of hop flowers in the world. Most breweries primarily rely on processed hops, hop pellets and hop extracts. While we do use those for our IPAs, we primarily rely on whole hop flowers. All right, so tell us the advantage to using whole hop flowers as opposed to pellets and extracts. We primarily use whole hop flowers because they give our beer a more natural flavor and aroma. This is where the hop strainer becomes so important. Absolutely, we have to filter out these whole hop flowers and leave behind the hop oil stored inside. Oh, look the at that. The yellow powder is called lupulin. It's the crystallized hop oil that's solidified since these hops have been dried. This is what brings us our bitterness, our flavor, our aroma, and antioxidants, believe it or not. Absolutely, beer's good for you. That's right. Guys, we are in Brew One. This is the original Bend Brew House, and we are hanging out with the master of Brew One. This is Veronica Vega. This is basically where everything started uh, 25 years ago. Yep, this little brew house was supplying the, the, the pail, the porter, all that, and now it has shifted a little bit. While we still supply beer for our customers, we also have specific projects that we are asked to develop down here, so that's really the fun part, a project like an Irish stout. So for this beer, for example, I'd never made one, so I did it for St. Patrick's Day. That is really well done. This is a smoked brown with fermented with the Belgian yeast and with uh, beechwood smoked malt. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. This was a, a fun project I did recently. This is a current event. So this was partially an R&D project for our Black Butte 25. I did about five barrels. And then I had this, this beer that was too sour to, to pour on its own, so I made 10 barrels of a Baltic porter condition that on raspberries and then and then blended the two. I did uh, a malt bill um, that, that took Pilsner malt, um, some oak smoked wheat, some flaked oats, and really? um, some juniper. That's kind of cool, you know, that you're basically getting to play. Craft beer is, is really, it's all about the good ingredients that give you the good yeah. product, and it's about having fun with it. Exactly. It's a lot of hard work, but it's really, really worth it. Yeah. Um, just when you have the glass in front of you, you kind of forget about everything that happened leading yes. up to it. Such a pleasure for me to be able to come and talk to you guys and get to know you guys and taste amazing beers. Yeah, And, and I'm tired of these fries sitting in front of me, so I'm going to eat them. <laughs> so what are you drinking? River Ale. Very cool. How do you like it? It's good. Very good. Yeah. So we like the sweet potato fries. We like um, the uh, tacos. The food's nice. good. The beer's good. People are good. We really enjoy it. Next up, we're going to get an exclusive tour of the Deschutes Barrel Room. This is a top secret location where beers like Abyss and Mirror Mirror are aging as we speak. This is really cool. We are in the off-site barrel room for Deschutes. This is a top secret location, so for those of you that want to find the address, we're not giving it out. We're with Ryan. Ryan's going to tell us all about it. Ryan, how you doing today? I'm doing great. So what happens in this room? We've got 1,200 oak casks, kino barrels, whiskey barrels, rye barrels, all sorts of different wood. We age bis here. Uh, we age sour beers here. How long have you guys been doing a barrel age program? We've had a barrel age program since uh, about 2005, but it's just continues to grow, continues to expand. We've got about 1,200 casks in here now, and by the end of this year, I expect to have about 2,100. And you mentioned some bourbon, you mentioned brandy, you mentioned pinot. Let's talk about what those things do from a barrel to a beer. You are getting nice flavors from the previous liquid. You're also getting some nice tannins and things from the wood itself. It can create a great environment for re-fermentation, for souring, because the yeast will just sort of line that barrel and you can, you can sour, empty the barrel, refill it, and oftentimes that yeast is still happy and it'll just continue to go on. It's amazing uh, all the different things that come into not just making a beer, but when you're aging a beer and the things that can change yeah. um, in the barrel, in the bottle, it's really awesome. This is just an amazing thing to be a part of, to be in the barrel room here. We're gonna go enjoy uh, some quality control. It looks amazing. Oh, oh man. Oh, this is what makes life good. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. Good, good. That is absolutely incredible. I cannot wait till this gets into a bottle and then into my glass. All right, so we're gonna do some clams. We're ready for some clams, man. Look no, good. I think we need some seafood on our diet after all that uh, pork. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna have to put some pork on the clams. Oh. If you think I'm pork heavy, you're right. <laughs> you know what, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start with a little bit of uh, a Thomas olive oil. Uh, we're just gonna get that going in a nice hot pan real quick. Okay. What we're gonna do now is just add a little bit of our house-made sweet fennel sausage that we make okay. here. Okay. Yep. You can use any sweet Italian sausage. It works great. The smells are already jumping. Yeah, and just as much as I love pork, I almost love fennel. So I'm gonna take a little bit of roasted fennel bowl that I cut also into kind of a julienne matchstick cut. I'm just gonna let that warm for just a second. Then we're gonna add a little bit of minced garlic. Well, it's good. Since you love garlic, let's go oh, ahead and do that I twice, like this. right? Yeah, yeah. To order. Exactly. And now that we've got this pungent uh, saying, saute the, the, the going aroma on. aroma is amazing. Isn't that nice? So now at this point, now that we're getting a little color and getting a little action on our uh, ingredients, we'll go ahead and we'll add the clams. Uh -huh. And what kind of clams are you using for this We're dish? using manila clams. And this is a nice, real small, really easy to eat clam. So for people that are afraid of the big clam and having to bite into it, right. this is a fun one because you can just kind of swallow. All right. What I'm going to do is I I'll also prepared a saffron I was gonna broth. Say, we're missing some liquid. Exactly. Now, and there's a there's an important reason for the saffron broth. We're going to go ahead, not only for the flavor, it's just a little bit of lemon, saffron, 
uh, the leftover fennel pieces, the greenery and all that. So now that we've got a little liquid in there, we're just gonna go ahead and cover it and let okay. it sit, go ahead and boil out for just about three minutes so until the clams all get some open nice up. Steam. So now the uh, uh, saffron broth is uh, reduced down a little bit. Um, you can have more broth if you like, uh, you know, a lot of bread dipping and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I go a little lighter on this broth, so you know we've got a nice amount there. So sure. what I'm going to do now is just finish it off. So there's a little bit of that Deschutes River ale, yeah. just about an ounce or so. It doesn't need much. And then, of course, one of the favorite ingredients of all chefs, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> butter. All right, should we uh, pull these things up and I have, think we have a little something to eat here? Sounds like a plan. Get your, I like to get the broth in there first, just so sure. it sort of hits the bottom. Mm. Also, some pretzel bread, crostini. I love it. We'll just kind of lay that out. All right, so we get to try it now. All right, let's dig into it. Oh, wow, that smells fantastic. Spell Seavers. Coming up next, we'll meet Gary Fish, founder and owner of Deschutes Brewery, and Chef Jeff is going to make us a Black Butte Porter Burger. Today we're hanging out in the Bend Brew Pub for Deschutes Brewery, hanging out with Gary Fish, uh, the founder and owner of Deschutes, and uh, just enjoying some beer. So welcome, Gary. Thank you very much. My wife and I moved here in 1987 with the intent to open the brew pub. It was a very different place. A lot of the uh, storefronts were boarded up downtown. Nobody could have predicted what was to come uh, in both the industry and the area in and around Bend. In 1988, there wasn't a whole lot of craft beer out there. I think there were two uh, bars in town that served any craft beer at all, and people didn't know quite what to make of us. But they gave us a chance. They trusted us. We made friends and we survived the tough early years to participate in what's been one of the greatest business movement stories in America with craft beer. Gary, really appreciate you joining us, talking about the history. I have work to do. Cheers. Yeah, cheers, thanks. which is Central Oregon's most popular place for people to come for snow activities where they get an average snowfall of 462 inches a year. And something people didn't know about Mount Bachelor in the Central uh, Oregon area is there are, at least I've been told this, there are as many sunny days here as there are in San Diego. Almost hard to believe. But we are out here learning to snowboard. I'm with my buddy Jimmy. This is my first time doing it. He's been doing it for a while since uh, he lived back in Louisville. Jimmy, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going good. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so you've been uh, in Bend for how long? Uh, just under eight years. And what brought you out here? You know what? Uh, uh, Mount Bachelor beer and outdoor activities. <laughs> hey, you know what? We do all those, th all those things on the show. Uh, so you've actually been snowboarding out here, I guess, for about eight years now. What yep. is it about Mount Bachelor that people love? Well, you know the the terrain is uh, is really uh, really good, really family uh, family friendly. Uh, we've got uh, lots of parks, terrain parks for uh, those uh, who uh, really like to do the tricks and everything like that. We've got a lot of uh, varied terrain, lots of tree runs, things like that. The great thing about here is one week it'll be sunny, and then uh, the next week you'll have a week straight of powder. That's pretty awesome, and uh, one of the really cool things that I've learned about uh, Mount Bachelor is that they actually have the longest snow ski season in the United States. Uh, so it means that you've got a lot of opportunity to come up here uh, and play on your snow sports, but in the summertime, it's mountain bike time. They turn it they turn it into a downhill for people who like riding their bikes. And uh, I, I saw a half pipe down there. Can I get ready for the half pipe today? You know, that might be a little <laughs> beyond uh, what you want to do. <laughs> it is a little bit beyond what I want to do, but we're having a great time. You know, have fun, come out here, check out Mount Bachelor. This is just an awesome time. And let me tell you something, I'm a first timer. I've already hit the hill once. And once you start getting over your own fears, it's a breeze, right? It's a breeze, right? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, fine. it's a breeze. We got this. We're gonna hit the slope. Oh, 
that hurt? <laughs> Another great activity uh, on Mount Bachelor is snowshoeing. Uh, especially, uh, we just got uh, fresh powder last night, probably about six to eight inches. And uh, snowshoeing is just hiking with a little bit of snow and throw some shoes on to keep them from sinking in. It's just a lot of fun. Hanging out with Tana Fenske from Visit Bend and Tana, that's a pretty uh, awesome activity to do up here. It is, yeah. It's one of those things I recommend all the time to people who, you know, maybe aren't that keen on snowshoeing or snowboarding. Just strap the shoes on and start walking. That's pretty much all there is to it. Yeah, and, and obviously we've seen Bendy likes it. Yes. <laughs> Ben was named the nation's dog friendliest city by Dog, Fa dog Fancy Magazine a couple years ago, and nice. um, you can see this is this is one of her favorite activities. We snowshoe in the winter time, and she goes out stand up paddle boarding with me in the summer. So, best of both worlds for a dog. Right, and for you, this is work. <laughs> this is work. Yes, my job does not suck. <laughs> Great. Well, we're gonna take Bendy and uh, hit some more trails, and uh, man, this is just the best way to get away from it all. So, if you hit Central Oregon, definitely check out the opportunity to snowshoe. <laughs> Come on, come on. So it's time for a burger. Black View Porter Burger, baby. We're going to do right. this thing. So what I'm gonna do, just to start off, is I'm just gonna give this a nice little bit of salt and pepper. It doesn't need a ton of seasoning because we got the Black View Porter sauce that we're gonna add to the dish. So we got a wicked nice hot pan here. And you wanna get a good sear on that. So what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this burger off. Start by sauteing just a little bit of oyster mushroom. Man, look at that. All right, so those are starting to look pretty nice. So I am gonna add just a hint of minced garlic. Okay. And for you, I'll double that up. <laughs> We're adding a black meat porter sauce, right? That's correct. The black meat porter sauce, super simple. It's black meat porter, Worcestershire sauce, balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna do probably like two, let's say three ounces of liquid here. And that'll sort of deglaze the pan, get those mushrooms finished oh. up. So this is the way we do it at the restaurant. I got a little bit of grilled red onion. I think that'll oh, just pop that nice. off. Yeah, now I'm just gonna crank this sucker up and we're gonna finish it. I've got a little bit of this fabulous pond hopper cheese from a local creamery called Tumala Farms. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven for about 20 seconds and just let that cheese melt up a little bit and we'll get this thing on a plate. I'm gonna start by just putting down the bottom piece of our brioche bun that we bake here in house, but any bun you like will work. This is the obsidian stout mayonnaise that we make here. And so we'll just go ahead and put that nice burger there. We're gonna grab a little bit of these red onions, get those on there. See, and what I like to do, and this, this makes it a little on the messy side, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure to get those mushrooms and some of that sauce just right on top of the burger. Think we can handle a little bit of that. You think you can handle that? Now, I don't think there's any possible way I am not gonna get at least a little bit messy. Uh, yeah, I might have to step back. I'll so, all right, camera zone, watch out, because I'm going in. That is so well done. And as you can see, yes, I did make a mess. That has got tons and tons of flavor. Not something you're going to want to do in your Sunday best, though. <laughs> I would say not. But I'm going to keep going. Cool, man. I'm glad you did it. Mm. Wow. You know, it doesn't really matter where I go in this country. Part of the craft beer experience is the great beer, the great food, and the great people I meet along the way. Right, guys? Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you on the next episode of Destination Beer. Wait, Knuckle! Studios.